Welcome to the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, your guide to motorsport sponsorship. Here's your host, Josh Weesey. Welcome to episode 53 of the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast, which is powered by ImpactFuel.org. My name is Josh Weesey, and I am your host. I'm here to help guide you through the crazy complex world of motorsports sponsorship. Tell me with that today, I have two featured guests. They are representing both the sponsor side and the rider side of this business. Kirk Zak is here from HMK USA, along with one of his backcountry sponsored snowmobilers, Tucker Mertz. Now, before we get into the structure and the interview, I have a few things to cover with you. First off, if you would be so gracious to head over to iTunes and leave a little rating, leave a little review, that would be phenomenal. Uh, I definitely... Love seeing the feedback. Uh, I'm actually going to read feedback that was left uh, earlier this year. This is from my pal Derek MJ64. Josh's sponsored Rider Club podcast provides the listener with valuable information and strategies from professionals all over the racing industry. The outline for the podcast is very unique and designed to be like race day. Keep up the great work, and I can't wait for the upcoming episodes. So I appreciate Derek taking the time to leave that message and uh, would love it if you did the same. Whatever podcast player you are on, though, it would be phenomenal if you subscribed. The benefit to subscribing is that you don't miss any upcoming guests. Now, our next one I'm super excited about is GNCC ATV champion Walker Fowler. Ron Patton is coming on of Stud Boy Traction. Then we have Josh Martelli of Mad Media, UTV Underground, Terranaut Media, and also the Mint 400. And then finally, we have Tiffany Stone coming on. She's a motorsports host for Torque, along with other various uh, activities within the motorsports industry. Super pumped to have all of those guests coming on. And that's really just the beginning. We have a ton more lined up after that. To get insider access to our upcoming guests and also gain access to a forum where riders and racers can share best practices, Check out the Sponsored Rider Club on Facebook and request to join. I review those requests, and as long as you're as part of the motorsports industry, I'm probably going to click approve. Now, if you ever have questions about the podcast, or if you have specific guest recommendations, shoot me an email, podcast at impactfuel.org. This episode is brought to you by four awesome companies. The first is Solderweld. They produce game-changing metal bonding technology products. The next is TopThePodium.com. They're experts in motorsport sponsorship. Then we have Bold Racing and Suspension. They're a family race team and custom suspension experts. Then we have Neverlift Racing, and they are giving us the Armor Coat product. And you'll hear more about those products later on, along with all the other sponsors. But if you already know about Armor Coat and you just are ready to make another purchase, go ahead and head over to ArmorCoatProducts.com. And use promo code ARMOR10 at checkout for 10% off your next order. All right. Here's the structure of the podcast. It's set up like a race. We'll begin with the qualifier, which is basic introduction. In Heat 1, we'll dive into the background of both of our guests. Heat 2, we'll talk about sponsorship tactics and strategies, and specifically relationship between sponsor and rider. And then in the main event, we'll discuss mindset, and then we'll end at the finish line. We'll get closing comments and find out how to contact both Kirk and Tucker. Without further ado, let's get it. All right, well, welcome everybody to this episode of the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast. I'm super pumped for this one because we've got another example of a sponsor and the sponsored rider on the call at the same time. Super pumped. So we have Tucker Mertz and Kirk Zach of HMK. So let's start off with Tucker. Maybe introduce yourself and then we'll we'll hop over and let kirk do the same howdy i'm tucker mertz uh, also known as tucker sleds on instagram i'm a professional pre-ride snowmobiler former snowcross racer and uh hill cross racer as well i, I didn't know you were uh hill hill cro- what you said hill cross or hill climb hill cross i've hill done cross. a little bit of hill climb but uh hill cross racing what's hill cross i don't think i've even heard of that before um, I guess it's kind of a little bit hard to explain, but it's, uh, it's kind of like a snow cross track that goes straight up the mountain, kind of like a, maybe a straight rhythms, if you will. Mm. And it's the 
first one to the to the end of the track. It's usually about a uh, less than a minute long race. Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Kirk, uh, it's you're up, man. Give us a quick intro and maybe just tell us a little bit about HMK. Hey, everybody. It's uh, Kirk over here at HMK, and uh, yeah, this is an outdoor gear brand that I started in 1999. Seems like an eternity ago. And I just took my love of uh, the mountains, snowmobiling, um, geez, freestyle riding, backcountry riding, you name it. And then I uh, took my love of snowboarding and sort of melded them all together to start this brand. And uh, yeah, here we are. How many years later? Started with a set of boots. And now we're making all kinds of great gear for riders all over the world. Tons of fun. That's cool. I don't know what it is. I just get like fascinated by snowmobile gear i don't know why it's I, I there's just so many options it looks cool i i like the idea that you got to stay warm but not get sweaty and all that stuff uh there's always something new coming out i don't know it's just i could i could spend like hours just looking and <laughs> reading reviews and you know watching like videos where people try on gear and stuff i don't know i don't know why it is that way but it's cool stuff No worries. Well, we have a lot of great gear to offer, and you can check it out, of course, on our website and go to your local dealers another way. But, uh, yeah, there's nothing better than than trying on new gear, making sure it fits you right. Uh, We always recommend that to people as well. So Mm -hmm. good good stuff. So the the next most important thing about this podcast is how you two work together. So tell us a little bit about that. What's your relationship? (laughs) Tucker and I have known each other a long time, and uh, we were talking about that a little bit earlier here. Um, Tucker, how far back do we go now? I can't even remember. Uh, I was going to school in South Dakota, which would have been my sophomore year of college. Be about 2006 or 2007 is when we oh. first met at an wow. HMK booth in, in at uh, Heydays. Ten years, huh? It's been a while now. 10, 11 years we've been working together on stuff. And it's certainly evolved over the years from just meeting each other and you know, now full sponsored rider with us, helps us out with uh, trade shows and does all kinds of great things for us. But most importantly, great guy, good athlete, and uh, fun to work with. Oh, that's really cool. I, I love hearing both the the sponsor and the, the rider at the same time, talking to each other, interacting. It's really cool. Uh, I'm really glad that, that both of you are taking the time to, to share some of the, some of your experiences with us today. So, um, the next thing I want to do though is dive into Heat One, it, where we really talk a little bit more about your backgrounds and understand a little bit more about what makes you tick and how you got to where you are. So, uh, you know, I'm gonna ask this question to both of you, but I'll start off with with Tucker. You know, give us the story of how you first got into motorsports. You know, like how did you get started in it? What was your first machine? Things like that. All right. Well, I've, uh, I don't know, kind of, I've been riding for a long, long time, but it really started with uh, my parents. They were riding snowmobiles before I was even born. Uh, and we grew up in Midwest, actually in Nebraska. Um, and my parents would ride into town when it was snowing hard. To, they'd ride to town to go to uh, games and, and watch high school sports and whatnot. And when I was old enough, um, probably four or five, six years old. My, uh, my dad had a extra sled in the, in the barn and he'd start it up and tell me I couldn't touch it till it was warmed up. And once it was warmed up, I could go ride it and I'd ride it until I got it stuck, ran it out of gas or it just died. And, you know, I wasn't strong enough to start it. So I'd have to, I'd have to run all the way home, no matter how far <laughs> away I was to, to get him to, to start it for me. And, you know, I was usually stuck in a, in a snow drift about a mile or two from home. And, and, uh, so I got started on the, on the enticer and that's where that all started. I had a little four wheeler as well that, uh, was given to me on my sixth birthday and dad would get mad at me when I was showing off cause I was going to break parts and he'd spent too much trying to fix it already. And, and always got the scolding that I couldn't be couldn't be showing off. I couldn't afford to show off, and wasn't good enough to show off. So I guess that was kind of one of my driving driving factors in my life. But I moved up and kind of moved to Colorado when I was a freshman in high school, and my life revolved around wrestling. So it wasn't uh, I wasn't really pushing it. I just I rode sleds because it was fun, and and when I finished high school, I was done with 
wrestling and just started racing motocross a little bit and started hanging out with the wrong crowd, if you will, in terms of people to snowmobile with that were kind of pushing the limits a little bit. And my competitive spirit from wrestling made me want to go as big as they did. And when I started going bigger than they did, then I started hanging out with the rougher crowd and <laughs> started going as big as they did and just kind of always pushed myself by hanging out with people that were going farther and doing better than I was. And I'm still trying to do that today. Just uh, ride with the best there is and, and try and show that I can do better than they do. And, and if I ever do that, then I'll try and find another class higher. So, uh, you know, one thing I want to pull out of that is how you're talking about like going bigger. I mean, you're not kidding when you say going bigger. I mean, I've seen some of your photos, like it, you go pretty big. Uh, do you have any ideas of like, I mean, what size jumps you're actually taking, how far you're traveling on some of this stuff? Uh, you know, we, we've tried to step them off. I've actually, this year I'll be, I'm going to carry my range finder from hunting with me to try and get some real numbers, but, uh, the big ones were getting right at close to 200 feet and the goal is to keep pushing it farther than that and, and go 250, go 300. So, uh, roughly 200 feet right now. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, I've jumped, I've jumped my sled a couple feet, one or two feet before, and I felt like that was pretty impressive. So, uh, 200 is pretty crazy. Uh, well, that's cool, man. Uh, well, Kirk, net, let's let's talk a little bit more about how you kind of got in the motorsport. So we know uh, a little bit about HMK already from from the intro, but I mean, how'd you kind of get in the motorsports? How'd you know that that was going to be your passion? Well, I grew up in the uh, uh, Midwest. I grew up. I always joked I grew up in Southern Canada. But I grew up in Wisconsin, and uh, it was just a way of life. That's how you got around. As soon as it started snowing, you know, my friends and I would all take off on sleds and cruise around the lakes or trails, or whatever we could, and like Tucker, you start jumping them a little bit, and then you start hopping them up a little bit. And it was also a way that you would pull the ice fishing shack out onto the uh, onto the lake. So um, kind of kind of just took that. And then as I got more into um, alpine sports, as I discovered snowboarding, you know, putting those two things together just made sense. You know, take the poor man's helicopter up into the mountains, and then you could snowboard. And pretty soon we stopped taking the snowboard with us. and <laughs> Or we'd take the snowboard and we'd park it in the woods and we wouldn't use it at all because we could make turns going up and down. And that just kept evolving. And, and then here we are years later with, you know, a brand that's basically all about, you know, being able to have fun, whether it's on a trail or in the back backcountry or whatever. But it all started in the Midwest. There's no doubt about that. I, I can even remember uh, – when I went to college, I went to school at Stout in Menominee, Wisconsin, and I can remember running the uh, Bratwurst stand as a business major, and I did that for the ski team, and uh, I remember having a pretty good deal with the Budweiser team when they'd bring the big uh, big race sleds out there, and we'd trade brats for beers, because, well, why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, good memories, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Uh, so, Tucker, what are you riding today? Uh, this year, I will be riding a new 2018 Articat M8000, oh, awesome. and I've also got a 17 race sled. But most excited for my for my new new kitty. Yeah, I I actually just picked up a new cat myself. Uh, it's a little bit heavier than yours, but I I picked up a you know trail sled uh, 1100 Turbo Articat. I'm pretty pretty excited to get that out there, but. Man, it's a uh, you know mine's a 2016, so it's a the older uh, body panels, so a little bit a little bit wider. Uh, but man, the 2018s are really nice. I love what they did with those new sleds and that new motor, right? That's that's pretty exciting. Um, yeah. Good, good. Kirk, what uh what are you riding these days? That's funny. I'm on the cat train here with you guys. I just picked up two uh, brand new 2018 cats as well. I got a Mountain Cat 8000, and then I also got a uh, uh, snow pro as well both with the three inch tracks and then i also built another snow bike this year so a, a new side of the sport that some people haven't been introduced to we've been riding snow bikes for a while as well and uh this year we built uh ktm 450 uh, 2018 i bought the 450 um sxf and then we did uh paired that up with the uh, camzo kit so we're super excited to be working with camzo again this year and articat again this year and so it's going to be a ton of fun in the backcountry. It's uh, plenty of toys to play with, that's for sure. Oh, that's cool. I am shocked. We've got three cat people 
talking yeah. uh, on the phone at the same time. I think every other person I've interviewed has been either Polaris or Skidoo or something. So I'm pretty pumped, man. Uh, rocking out the cat thing. Uh, well, cool. That I think that was good, man. I feel like uh, people got a, a little bit of an idea of, of what you two do um, and how you kind of got there. But, you know, is there anything else that, that we should know, you know, from either Kirk or, or Tucker, like uh, things that, that really kind of define – your background or, you know, some of your experiences, either one of you can answer that question. Go ahead, Tucker. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot to it. It's hard to be specific without a direct question, but, um, there's a lot to what we do on the, on the backside of being riders, what we do for a living to, to, uh, be able to keep riding to afford it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a hunting guide. I'm a construction management guy. I got a college degree. I, uh, work hard to work hard to be able to play hard. So that's, uh, kind of the, the biggest thing right now is to be able to tell people that, you know, even though we're, even though I am doing this, doing a podcast or talk about sponsors, what I get, you know, nothing, nothing is, is a, a check coming our way. It's, it's, uh, this is all about figuring out how to be able to afford to do this for fun. And, uh, uh, it's, you know, that, that's what it is. It's, you're getting discounts and you're getting some things for free, but you're not getting a check for it. So mm-hmm. it's doing what you can to be able to afford to do what you love and to do it at the, uh, at the top, top of your ability. And yeah. Oh, certainly. That's good. Um, well, Hey man, the next thing I'd like to do is hop in the heat too. And that's where we get into some of the details around sponsorship tactics, strategies, things like that. But before that, I want to take a quick minute to thank the sponsors for this podcast. I want you to think long and hard about this next question. Where do you think you should be spending your time at? Should it be on developing a sponsorship program? Or should it be on cleaning the mud and dirt and filth and grime off your machine? I'm hoping that the answer you're thinking in your head is that you'd like to spend it on your sponsorship program. That's why you're listening to this podcast, and that's where you should be focusing your off-the-track time. But sometimes that mud and grime and whatever, it's there, and you got to get it off your machine, right? And that's actually why I want to talk to you next about Armor Coat, brought to you by Never Lift Racing Company. So Armor Coat products help prevent mud, clay, ice, all that other garbage stuff from sticking to your machine and ultimately it ends up cutting your cleanup time in half and it, i mean it, your machine looks great it leaves a, essentially a water resistant shine helps fight corrosion and you can use it on like multiple services so it's ultimately fantastic and, and really the purpose of this product like i said before is to make the racer's life easier now if this at all intrigues you i want you to check out armor coat at armorcoatproducts.com coat is spelt with a k and when you get there use promo code armor10 to get 10 percent off the products i hear it constantly from racers that a good suspension setup is absolutely critical for performance, and that's why I'm going to talk to you next about bold racing and suspension. Now, it's really critical to understand your suspension, and there's so many intricacies with the valving and the, the shims and all this crazy equipment that you need to actually you know, rebuild and properly set up your suspension that it's really important if you're ready for that next level of, of performance to partner with with an awesome suspension company. Now, Bold Racing is that company. They're not only specialists with their suspension setups, but they also partner with companies that produce amazing custom components. And on top of that, they're a family race team. They actually race themselves, so they really understand the type of beating that your vehicle and your shocks can take. So what I want you to do is give them a call and just chat with them. Talk to them about suspension. Their number is 702 706-5354. If you're not ready for a phone call, go ahead and shoot them an email, bold.racing at yahoo.com. Have you ever been out on the trail or at the track or in the middle of the desert and something breaks? Well, of course you have. We've all been there. 
But a lot of people at that point, they reach into their trusty toolbox for the duct tape or the zip ties or wrenches to fix their machine. However, there's a feeling that you get when you realize you need more than just duct tape to fix that rock chip in your radiator. That's a horrible, horrible feeling to have. And that's why I'm going to tell you next about Solder Weld's metal bonding products, specifically Alloy Saw. So this product gives you a longer term fix than JB Weld, which is just going to get you back to the trailer or back to the pits. With basically the assistance of map gas or propane torch, you can quickly and easily repair an oil cooler, radiator, AC line, or any crack or hole in aluminum. And better yet, Alloy Soil Flux is the only flux in industry that cleans and decontaminates the dirty and greasy surface for you. So you don't even have to worry about that part. The Alloy Soil rods are actually capable of a 30,000 PSI fix, and they're stronger than even the parent metal, and they're built to last the lifetime of the part. So don't let a simple radiator leak leave you out of the race or broken down in the trail. Bring along some alloy sole, aluminum alloy repair rod and flux from Solder Weld. I am constantly asking the guests of this podcast how they attract and retain sponsors. And on almost every single occasion, somebody gives an example of a resume. A rider or a racer resume is extremely important to your overall sponsorship pitch and proposal. And it's tough to do. I mean, it's not really the easiest thing. Anybody can go through and put together a resume, so don't get me wrong there, but it's really difficult to get something that's like unique and different and stands out. And then also is something that can be put across multiple platforms. Well, that's one of the things that I want to talk to you about next is how topthepodium.com can actually help you build a race or writer resume that can be used on multiple platforms. I'm talking like website, PDF, you know, something you can print off that's interactive, that looks fantastic, it looks absolutely professional. Well, that's because it's made by a professional. This is the type of thing that's going to set you apart from the crowd and that's going to position you for a strong sponsorship proposal. So what I want you to do next is go to topthepodium.com and if you have a question, there's a little chat icon that pops up on the side of the screen when you go to topthepodium.com and you can go ahead and type your question right there. Jeff Vanistall, he is the owner of Top the Podium. He's going to be able to respond to you directly. So check it out. All right. Welcome back, everybody. We are now in heat two. That's the meat of the podcast. This is where we really dive in. This is where you take out your notebook and your pencil and uh, jot down some notes. Uh, the first thing I really want to talk about with, you know, attracting and retaining sponsors is starting from Kirk's perspective. I mean, what is something that you look for out of a brand ambassador? What are some of those, those traits, those personality traits or characteristics? Well, you know, it's, uh, people that are really into the lifestyle. Um, you know, Tucker's talked about it a little bit already, but you know, people that live, eat, breathe and everything they do is really designed for them to get back on the snow or back out there and have fun. Um, you know, people that are honest. Um, you know, they don't necessarily have to have uh, an amazing resume or they don't necessarily have to have an amazing, uh, um, maybe they don't have a lot, of, a lot of followers, let's say. You know, some people think that's the tell-all end-all is social media, but there's a lot of different ways to be involved and to be sponsored. And so from our side, we're just, we're looking for people that really live the lifestyle. And I think that's important. Uh, it's not something that's just looking for something free and then they're moving on to the next brand or whatever else they can get for free. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. I, I would also tie that to that uh, those, those same athletes or those same people, you know, some athletes are able to do a little more, some can't do as much. It really just depends. You know, everybody is different when you, when it comes to the sponsorship side of things, you know, what, what you need from a, uh, let's say a snowcross team is a lot different than what you might need from um, a backcountry uh, guy like Tucker. You know, they're, they're two different animals, but in the end, it all comes down to they live, eat, breathe, a lifestyle. Um, they're doing this with a passion. And uh, ultimately, uh, when it really comes together, we actually get to go out in the snow and do some stuff together. That's when it really is a ton of fun. We get to actually go out with your athletes and ride with them and have that experience that, you know, I'm not just a, I like to joke, I'm not just another fat office guy sitting here that we truly are on the snow as much as possible. So... Anyway, from our side, I I just like the people that are really in, into what they're doing. Oh, that's good. I mean, I feel like 
that's got to be hard to tell. I mean, I know that you can you can find that out when you're actually riding with them, right? I think it's probably pretty obvious. But how do you even get to that point where you understand that that is a true passion for them? I mean, I I just don't even know where to start. Well, I won't disagree with you there. It is difficult. And, you know, some people, they get on the phone and they get pretty excited and, and, and you get excited because of it. And then, you know, you get down the road and you find out that they're just a good sales guy. <laughs> mm, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that as well. I mean, you know, some of the people that we sponsor, maybe they don't have the most amazing resume or maybe they don't uh, uh, have a lot of followers, as I've mentioned before. But the flip side is, is they've got a great tie to a local shop and they work at that shop all the time and, and they're they're passionate about it. You know, you talk to the shop owner and, and sometimes we meet athletes that way as well, where a shop owner will say, Hey, have you heard about so-and-so? Uh, well, it could be Tucker, for example. Um, he introduced us to a shop in Colorado last year as well, a uh, front range. And, um, but a lot of times that, that ties into it too. So, you know, each case is different. Uh, and sometimes you take a chance with somebody and it doesn't pan out, but I would say in general, you know, we, we believe people are good and kind. It's the Midwest in me as well. Just be honest with, with what you're doing and it'll all work out. Uh, in the end, if, if you're really just out to get free stuff or you're just out to get a good deal, uh, that'll come out in the wash too. Um, mm -hmm. it, it might not, it might be right, right away, but, uh, in, in the end you'll figure it all out. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Well, the next thing I want to talk, uh, talk about next question really is, is for Tucker. And I, I kind of want to hear a couple examples from you of, you know, when you first contact the sponsor, and I, I kind of want to understand some of the details around, like, where were you at? What would you say? I mean, it could be even with Kirk when you guys initially, you know, connected. I mean, So maybe just give us one or two examples uh, of of how you made that contact. All right. Well, uh, you know, through Snowmobile and I have made some pretty awesome connections. And, and uh, a lot of the connections that I've made have been through some of my good friends that I met through sledding that became best friends and those guys actually were connected way better than I am currently still, you know? Um, but I had, uh, I was racing snow cross and hill cross and they reopened hill cross for X games. And my, I decided that my new goal in life was going to be to qualify for X games in the hill cross. <clears throat> and I had, ran there were a couple other classes open that you could take uh you could take a stock class um or an improved class or a full mod class and and basically if you won or were top three in the mod class you you were into the x games and if you were uh and that was pro open um and then if you qualified in in any of the other classes then then you were uh, a candidate so i did it on a on a stock sled actually borrowed a friend's 800 and tried to run the run the pro open on the on a stock 800 and in the stock class as well i ran every class i could to get my name out and, and uh i crashed and then i also crashed in my snow cross race and ended up in the er so that meant that i wasn't going to go at all um and i decided that next year i was gonna i was gonna qualify for x games and I might not have been good enough. I don't really know, but I had confidence on my side in, in terms of I feel like I, I can ride hard and I'm dedicated to it. So I started trying to build a sled to actually qualify with. And uh, I was working with Speedworks and they were, you know, they're great to me. They still are great to me. But even with the help, it was going to be about 15 grand with, uh, with a snowmobile that I already had it was going to be 15 grand to put that sled together and to, uh, and to be a real contender to, to fight with the best of them, to, to go to that pro open qualifier race and just, you know, lay it on the line. And if you got top four there, top three there, then, and you get to go to X games. And you know, I, I, uh, I said, yeah, let's do it. And the second I said that, it was like, shoot, how the, how the heck am I going to be able to afford to do anything else? Like I don't have gear and I don't, I don't have, I don't have anything. And I remember it back, uh, when I first met Kirk and, uh, they were pretty awesome. And, um, I've, I was like, well, uh, maybe I'll give this guy a call. And, uh, I, I looked up a old buddy that I rode with Fred Rasmussen that you've had on mm -hmm. the podcast. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he actually lived in Granby where I'm from for a while. And, uh, 
and we got to ride together a few times and, and I called him and I was like, Hey, could you, what would I, what should I do to get in touch with HMK? And he gave me Kirk's direct cell phone number. And, uh, I, I called Kirk and, uh, didn't get a hold of him that time, but he called me back and <laughs> I told, told him the exact same story and said, you know, I'd, I'm not asking for anything free. I just, um, I don't know how I'm going to be able to afford this and anything you can do to help me out is, you know, if it's a, if it's a certain percentage off, if it's 50% off or whatever it is, you know, that's, if I need $500 in gear, that's $250 more that I have to spend on my sled to make sure I'm as fast as I can be. And, and, uh, he said, you know, he, he remembered me from when we worked at Hey Days and put it all together. And here I am riding for HMK now. And it actually turned out that right after I was, making all these life-changing decisions to spend spend my down payment on a home on a, on a snowmobile they uh decided <laughs> to remove bill cross from the x games so uh-huh. i actually had to do a moral change and call kirk and say hey they they aren't going to have x games and i'm not going to be able to represent you on uh, at the qualifiers or at x games so i apologize and he uh step forward and still said if anything you need let us know and we'll we'll take care of you so it's uh that's how i got into sponsorships and been doing it ever since oh that's cool kirk do you remember do you remember the heydays when when uh tucker maybe first contacted you oh man (laughs) he was just a kid it's pretty funny because that would have been what ten and a half years ago probably yeah, it's pretty funny to think that long ago, but uh, we were joking about that how we how we've all changed over time. But you no, know, in the end, we're still the same people. But it's it's pretty cool of, of what all has happened, how long we've been together doing stuff. And uh, Tucker's really good. He's a great example of of an athlete that comes up with other ideas or new ways to do stuff. Or he was always he was calling or emailing like, hey, what about this idea? Or hey, I just found this dealer that's going to do a show. What if we do an HMK booth with him? And uh, uh, I love that kind of stuff. So, you know, keep, keep doing that Tucker. Actually, it's a, it's a good, uh, it's good to share that with other people. There's, there's a lot more to being a sponsored athlete than, than just the glorious, uh, hopefully being on the podium or hopefully having the big jump in the back country that ends perfectly. Not, uh, not on, not on YouTube because it didn't end so well. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that, uh, I'm, I want to dig into a little bit more is, uh, Tucker, you had said that he remembered me from Heydays, meaning that you had met him at one point at Heydays in person, and then at some later point you got his number from somebody else and then called him. Is that right? Am I thinking about that the right way? Yeah, so when we actually actually met, um, I wasn't even racing at the time. One of my buddies, my roommate in college was uh, – Zach Dawson was a snowcross racer and said that he was knew this guy that had started up a uh, snowmobile boot company and he was working at Heydays and needed some help and <clears throat> I had always wanted to go to Heydays so like cool I'll go and uh, so I went to Heydays when it was at Lino Lakes and uh, I helped work at the HMK booth and I really wasn't a you know I wasn't I wasn't trying to be a sponsored rider. I wasn't really, you know, I was, I was nobody, not that I am a real somebody right now, but it's, uh, I was, I, I just wanted to go to Heydays and Kirk, uh, Kirk gave us some gear for helping out and, and got to actually sit and shoot it with, uh, with him and, uh, and have some beers and just have a good time and actually get to know each other before it even had anything to do with, uh, the sponsor rider relationship. Uh, I think that's really uh, that's key, right? Cuz it's not you just calling him. It was that you already started a relationship. Uh, I don't know how uh, do you know how long early how much earlier that was that before you had called him? Like was it weeks, months, year? I mean, I was working the booth for him in 2007 and I didn't call for a sponsorship until probably I think three years ago was when I really decided that I was going to take this over and, and do what I could with it. Uh, that's pretty cool. So it's, I think when people 
uh, hear like, ah, oh, yeah, overnight success and oh, it's so they're so lucky they reached out to somebody and they made this connection. Like, well, it kind of they laid the groundwork. Like in this case, you laid the groundwork for it years ahead. You didn't even know it at the time, but you you were just doing what you thought was a good deed and uh, trying to help out, and you know it, it, it ended up building into a real relationship. Well, it, it, you know, yeah. on my side, it just proves it's a small world out there, and you never know where you're going to end up next. And uh, you know, if you if you're always, I was, I'll go back to what I said. You know, if you're kind of into the lifestyle, or if you just, you know, be honest with people, and then here you go, how many years later, you run back into somebody, and you're like, oh man, you were great in the booth and big help, and he's like, man, you were super cool too. We had a good time, and next thing you know, he's like, well, let's put something else together. Sure, why not? So that was unique. Yeah, I uh, I have a, an experience I've shared a couple times this podcast, but why not do it again? Uh, I do this uh, another side business called Impact Fuel, and it's basically a uh, charity fundraiser. And essentially, uh, I, I there's a guy on there that was consistently participating in in the events. Uh, his name was Jimmy Moore, and at the time, I did I just he was just another person who was participating, but he was constantly participating and leaving comments and being pretty active and you know, I just started, you know, responding to him fr- fairly frequently and shoot after like a year or so um, of him just kind of participating, he reached out to me randomly and was like, hey, would you uh, mind if I sponsor Impact Fuel? I was like, uh, sure, <laughs> that sounds good to me. I'm surprised you're reaching out for that. And, uh, you know, when we started talking more and he found out about this podcast, he's like, hey, can I sponsor this podcast? I was like, sure. And uh, then he invited me out to Vegas to Reno and to be in his pit crew for, you know, a week and hang out with his family and like work on his car. And I mean, now I'm like, this guy's my friend. And it's just it all started from him posting something on social media and tagging one of my businesses. And it's just it's it's really crazy to think how these types of relationships happen. I would have never imagined that, you know, I don't even know a year, year and a half ago that it would, you know, one post on social media would kind of turn into this. That's a, that's a pretty great story as well. I, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have that same experience. It's amazing how many people we've met over the years, how many great people we've met, and the friendships that we have over the years. And I can tell you there's there's some athletes that have ridden for us in the past that are not riding for our brand anymore for whatever reasons, but we're still really good friends. We still mm-hmm. stay in touch and hang out and you know, I look forward to some of these events you go to because it, it ends up being a, a great family or an extension of your family. So, yeah, good for you. That's that's a that's a great story on your side too, Josh. Yeah, I've uh, I've been pretty happy to share that because I think it's just a good example of how these things can can form and turn into something that like I never had any intention of that, and I don't think he did either. And it just kind of worked out, and it's been a, it's been fun. So, um. Well, cool. The next thing I want to talk about is social media a little bit. And Kirk, you've already given some examples of how social media might not be the be-all, end-all thing. So what would you say, what role do you say social media really plays in this whole sponsorship thing? Well, I, I think it's uh, become a, a really big part of it. Uh, the hard the hard part on our side sometimes is you'll get people that want to be sponsored that – they'll make it the, the tell all end all. They're like, well, I've got 14 followers. I need free stuff. And they're, you know, that's probably not the right example for that person. Maybe they haven't been educated properly. And, and uh, you know, it's important though. There's no doubt about it. It's mm-hmm. a whole different way of marketing through social media, whether it's, uh, you know, Instagram or Facebook or, or what have you. But, uh, uh, you know, it's it's just I would I would just caution people to remind them it's not the only thing that's out there. You don't have to just be on Instagram. Does it help? Sure, absolutely. And if you know how to use it, and maybe you can help us as well. We don't we don't pretend to know everything about it either. Um, you know, I'll use Tucker as my example again. You know, he's good about sending us uh, social media posts that are basically ready to go. Um, you know, we're we're always looking for content, whether it's video or stills or. Our athletes, um, you know, maybe it's Tucker out hunting and he's wearing our gear for that. Uh, Whatever might be appropriate. But, you know, the last thing I want to do is try to pretend like I know what was going on in that situation. I love it when an athlete can actually send us something ready to go. It makes our life easier, and it means that we're going to use that athlete's um, 
uh, picture. We're going to give photo credit to the to the proper person. You know, everybody's happy then. Everybody gets tagged properly, and we don't mind if it's on our uh, let's say Instagram as well as theirs and or others. It can be carried as many as possible. The the goal really there is the more the merrier. You know, the more likes the better. So um, I think it's important, but I don't. Uh, again, I, I will say that there's other ways to be sponsored, and that's the thing is that every every rider, every athlete that comes to us has a different story. And, and, um, you know, to be fair, we get busy here too, and we can't always hear the entire story. And so that's where that resume or a quick snippet, you know, what can grab our attention, whether it's a, a quick video clip or, um, some pictures or whatever it might be that are in a situation that, that goes, well, wait a minute, let's make sure we talk to this person a little bit more and see what we can do. And if they don't have unreasonable demands or unreasonable, um, you know, questions, whatever you want to say, then we're more likely to work with them. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, social media is definitely important. Yeah, I've uh, tried to pay attention to people's social media and you know what some of their sponsorship deals look like when I do know, because right, I, I, we don't always know exactly what what people's deals are, but I know some people who are on you know factory, uh, you know they're they're factory supported, so they're getting a new machine every year or whatever, and their social media is is maybe not necessarily that high, like less than a thousand followers on different platforms. Then I'll see other ones that have, you know, mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands of followers. And, uh, right. at, at those are the times where I, to, I, I start asking questions and I, I look into like, well, what else are they doing? Oh, well, they're on the podium all the time. So they're getting maybe some TV time or they're, uh, involved in a lot of, uh, you know, events where they're in person and they're, they're doing a lot of additional work. So I, yeah, I like how you said it's a supplement, um, and it's, it, it can be very, very helpful, but it's not always, that, that's not the only thing out there. Right. You know, it's, it's nice to look up out of the phone every now and then and see what's going on in the real world. And yeah. I think sometimes we all get sucked into the, the, the phone vibrates or rings, or whatever it is. And you immediately drop everything, even though you're with a group of other people that you were just having a conversation with. And it's like, Oh, sorry about that. It's, we've been trained by our phones to, yeah. to jump when it rings or buzzes. So, yeah, I honestly, have run into this a couple times, uh, and I don't know if it's good or bad yet, uh, but it feels bad. <laughs> I I don't share the experiences I'm in with everybody else all the time because I'm too busy experiencing it. So like if I'm out snowmobiling, you know that would be a, it's a great time to do, uh, you know an Insta story or a Facebook Live or whatever it is, and you know tag people and, I, but I I get involved in like experiencing whatever I'm experiencing and I either and I don't do it all the time and I think that that in some cases it's good I think because I'm experiencing it but in other cases I'm like ah oh, I just missed a really good opportunity to create some awesome content and share that you know real time with other people so I don't know I have Tucker maybe have you run into something like that as you're probably creating a lot of content yourself uh yeah I mean I haven't gotten on the FB live train yet I've uh, <laughs> thought about it when it, uh, initially when Facebook live came out, I, I started unfriending people that started using <laughs> Facebook. Live. <laughs> Cause you're always getting the notification. Like they're live, they're live. Yeah. And like you're live and there's nothing I need to see, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. Facebook. I understand that there's uh there's the fact where, yeah, we're, we're writing and we're, we're having a good time and, you know, I do a lot of things that aren't on camera that, man, I really wish were on camera. I've actually taken my, uh, some of the guys that do a lot of my photo stuff for me or videography stuff. I've taken them riding with me and, and they're like, oh man, will you, will you just take us riding for a day or like I'll even offer. I'll be like, I'll take you riding for a day, drop the camera equipment. Who cares? Let's, let's go ride and I'll help you get better at riding so we can actually like go do this and and then you can follow us into the good spots and get the good shots. And then, and then I find like the thickest whip I can and, and, and throw it down. And, and everybody's like, Oh, we, all we had was a GoPro and it was stuck on time lapse and, <laughs> and like son of a gun. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot to it where, you know, you'd, you'd like to be able to show the world what you can do, but, and you know, that's part of it is the reason why we ride is because we love to ride. It's not necessarily because we want to, uh, want to show everything off. But then once you get done showing off and there were no cameras, you immediately wish you had, yeah. had something. 
or or whatnot. So like I bring my phone along, but the 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 cool thing is somebody else has to take the pictures and usually don't have any service where I'm riding. So, you know, mm-hmm. that it keeps keeps that away from the actual enjoyment of, of doing it um for for that subject matter. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh well kind of similar line, you know, what what is your social media strategy, Tucker? I mean, what are the things that you try to do with your with your content? You know, I'm I'm still working to improve on it. Um, I've I've taken this summer in terms of being, you know, uh, what I did last year, what I did the year before that, and I watch all these guys that are really good at it, um, and you see that they've got content to continue through the summer. Um, you know, I I blow my wad and I I sh- I post my best picture from the weekend that day and and uh then i'm out of pictures so i you know i you know i i do a good job of uh of keeping a few pictures in the backlog but um moving forward i'd like to keep more um i'd like to get more info to just hold in a file folder to to post throughout the summer to keep people's attention but uh um as far as strategy i'm i skipped going to the strategy and went straight to uh how can I get better at it? But, um, my, my strategy right now is I've got an Instagram, I've got a Facebook. Um, it's a personal Facebook. I don't have an athlete page. I also have a Twitter. Um, but it seems to me that Instagram is my, my best, uh, my best interest. I've never been able to get likes or get followers from Twitter. I don't know if it's just our sport that Twitter is not our thing or, or what it is, but you know, Instagram seems to do it best for me and I can link everything from Instagram straight to Facebook. Um, Facebook seems to be more of a friend following. It's starting to blow up a little bit more, but, uh, um, Instagram seems to be where you can attack hashtag. Um, I used to hashtag everything under the sun. Uh, my girlfriend's actually in marketing and she's taught me that, um, I had to search for what are the most popular hashtags, uh, the good times to post things. And, you know, I've cut it down to five hash- hashtags about snowmobiling that, you know, kids that are wanting to see the coolest stuff, what would they click on? And, you know, it's, it might be hashtag snowmobile. It might be, uh, hashtag, uh, I don't know. You gotta, you just, it happens when you do it, you type a hashtag and, and kind of type in four or five words that re- uh, represent what you're into um, or what you're trying to get, like type in powder day or snowmobile powder day and you see it and it'll show 5 million hashtags in that, or it'll show 500 hashtags. But the most popular one is the one that you choose. And when that goes on and it's attached to your photo, I seem to get more likes and I get more followers and, uh, that's kind of something crazy that I've learned from the marketing world and being a construction guy, I knew nothing about that. So, um, hashtags are important to what I'm doing on social media as of lately. Um, following all the brands, you know, I am, I ride for HMK, but I follow to be, I follow climb. I follow FXR. I follow everybody just cause if you, you know, you're looking at it and you like it, Somebody else that following it, they see Tucker Sleds underneath it, and they, they, you know, it says Tucker Sleds like this. If they click on my profile, and they end up seeing a whole bunch of sweet photos of me wearing HMK gear, and you know, they start following me, and all they see is me posting pictures of HMK, and you know, I'm not not trying to steal thunder from anybody, but it, you know, that's the it's it's a tactic to get people to see see what else is out there, so. Um, timing hashtags and who you follow it's all got a got a big thing to do with it um also following up on what kirk said earlier about he doesn't care if i post a picture and i send it to him i used to send it to them and twiddle my thumbs for two days and and then call him be like why haven't you posted my picture and nobody (laughs) nobody uh you know they well you can post it if you want and i'd 
I didn't think about it, but then now that I do, you know, I'm trying to build my own brand with Tucker sleds. And, you know, if I post a picture of it and 500 people see it, there's still thousands and thousands of people that haven't seen my picture. So HMK posts it a month later and those thousands of people get to see it there. And, and then they come back to follow me and my guys follow them and it's a, it's a full circle. So uh, the more people posting your pictures, the better. Yeah, no, definitely. Kirk, do you have anything to add to that? I mean, is there anything that, that, that HMK does from a social media perspective that, you know, maybe the rest of us should be emulating? I don't know if I have much to add. I, I think Tucker, you know, hit the nail on the head. I, I would just say from a, from our standpoint, you know, as a sponsor, and, and I don't know how it works for, for other brands, but if, if I have an athlete that calls and they're unhappy that we haven't been promoting them or we haven't been using their photos, um, odds are there's a bigger story. Either one, they haven't been sending in photography. Um, you know, we'll, we'll get a, we'll get some athletes and they'll send us literally 200 pictures. And then they're like, why didn't you use any of those? And I'm like, cause you made my life a lot harder. Mm-hmm. I now have to go through 200 pictures and figure out which ones I like versus which ones you like. Like if you can narrow that down to me, for me, um, you know, help, help me out so that we can make it easy that we get the pictures you really like as well. Now, in some cases we may ask for 200 or 300 or more pictures. That's different. If we're, maybe we're doing a catalog or, you know, you have, um, one of the designers that's involved that wants to see piles and piles of pictures. But, um, I think with social media, a lot of times, at least for me personally, I, I just admit that I'm a little older. I probably put a little too much effort into trying to figure out what to post. That's why we have other people here to take care of that. You know, they make a decision, they look at the picture, they get it posted, and then they move on. And uh, But, you know, make it easy for your sponsor. If you want to see your pictures used, maybe that's one way to get them done. Um, mm-hmm. And if you're not seeing your stuff used, well, make sure you're providing content that's decent. And if you're providing content, have that conversation, too, that says, well, what don't you like about my pictures? What should I be doing differently? Oh, you don't like that the background always has uh, tennis courts in it? Well, that's probably why. <laughs> Some yeah. weird thing. Yeah. Like, it could be something that simple, though, where the background's not right. or the So talk talk to your sponsors, though, and find out what they want, whether it's from us or from somebody else, because everybody has a different take on the social media side of things. So. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty cool that we're talking about this because I don't think we have actually covered this in the show before, you know, about how a writer is actually sending content to a sponsor and they're reviewing and determining if they're going to post it or not. Uh, so I'm glad we're talking about that a little bit. I think it's an interesting topic. Um, you know, I, I think it's it's probably difficult sometimes to determine like, all right, well, I have this picture does that fit the intent of the brand and then the you know the brand has to review that and say uh yeah maybe this tweaks maybe change this but i also think it's really interesting you know if you send 100 or 200 like yeah that's a lot of stress i mean that's i think what you you nailed it by saying send me something that's ready to go like all i have to do is just oh i have it you've already picked out the best picture for me you already understand my brand you know, all I need to do is just take this from an email or whatever, an attachment, a thumb drive, and then put it onto my my social media account. So I like that. I like that. Um, well, that was a good, I think, a good coverage of social media. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, actually, I'll start with you, Kirk, is, you know, is there like a really good sponsorship proposal that, you know, maybe blew you away in the past or one that just – was phenomenal that maybe people should should hear you know it's uh i i wish i could have one great example that would everybody be like oh my gosh that's all i have to do and (laughs) and that's going to be the tell all end all i i I don't honestly have the holy grail of sponsorship proposals in my back pocket um i'll go back to what i've said before you know be true to yourself be honest with your sponsors you know know what you're looking for and that can help as well and and honestly you know don't don't be demanding um you know, don't make assumptions that, that you may or may not know what the company wants. And, um, you know, you go back to that demanding side. I, you know, it's easy to pick the ones that didn't work so well. I'm like, something as simple as sending in a resume, but you, you didn't spend, you didn't take the time to spell check it. Um, you know, um, it's so easy in this day and age to, to do, you know, send stuff in, but take your time and send the right stuff in. Uh, and, le- and let your sponsors know seriously what you're looking for. Yeah, you want free stuff. We get it. <laughs> no problem. We all do. It's really easy to give stuff away. It's a lot harder to sell stuff. If you can tell a sponsor that you're writing for 
a shop in your area and that you know the owner and you've been working with them for this long and that you're sweeping their floors on the weekends because they're helping you out with parts. And a lot of times that, that means a lot more to us than, than maybe having the most amazing resume ever. Mm -hmm. Um, don't get me wrong. We still want to see people that, um, perform at an elite level. Um, but odds are those guys that are at an elite level, you're probably not spending a lot of time looking at resumes with them. You already know who they are. Um, if I mention Chris Barant, I'm pretty sure everybody out there knows Chris Barant in mm -hmm. the snowmobile side of things. You know, he's true to his sponsors, been around a long time. He's very loyal, great guy. You know, just I can't say enough good things about him. We're not working with him anymore because of some sponsorship uh, conflicts where we weren't able to do that. But in the meantime, you know, great friend, uh, love his wife and kids and family. Like, those are the kind of things that, that you want to look at at least from our side that we do. So I wish I could give you the Holy grail of just do this and you'll get sponsored. But you know, the other thing too, I would say is timing. Uh, Tucker, you mentioned that as well, but uh, you know, you, you catch a guy on a Friday at, at six o'clock at night and they're trying to get on the road to go ride. And they're probably not going to be as um, attentive as you'd want them to be as opposed to a, a Thursday afternoon when they have a little bit more time to talk about something. So mm -hmm. think about what you want from the sponsor. Think about what you can do for the sponsor and how can you tie that to sales? Because ultimately if there's sales, there's budgets and the bigger the budget, the more that everybody can do um, together. And, and that's really what it ends up being about. And I think sometimes people lose sight of that. There's so many platforms out there that one can go to, to, to get sponsored or hooked up or broed out or the bro form <laughs> or whatever you want to call it. There's piles of that out there, but um, there's not piles of places out there saying, yeah, we're lining up to write million dollar orders so that you guys can spend more money on marketing and athletes. And don't get me wrong. I'm the first one here that wants to go on a fun trip to Canada or Togety or wherever, wherever it might be. I'm in. Yes. <laughs> That's the fun part of the, of the job, but there's a lot more work that goes into it. Uh, as I think most people understand that then, then it's just a full bro down every single day. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, is there anything called bro broed out? Like if not, I feel like somebody uh, needs to create that. I might need to try to find the uh, a dot com with that name uh, domain name tonight. Broed out dot com. Uh, <laughs> bro out or bro home. <laughs> that's good. Um, yeah, I I couldn't lock you in on a, a really good proposal, but what about a bad one? Is there one that was really bad that kind of stood out? You know, I, I alluded to it before, but um, people that uh, we've had some athletes that have been pretty demanding, uh, either in person or um, uh, you'll get you'll get an athlete. And, and I apologize to those out there that may know me that are like, yeah, I met you five years ago and you gave me a promo code, but it doesn't work. And I'm, I feel bad because I can't remember every single person I want to. And I, but I'm only human. You meet a ton of people in this job. You meet lots of great people. But the flip side is, is you, you meet every now and then the, the I don't know what you want to call it, but uh, somebody that's super demanding, you know, like I, I was supposed to already know them. They're, they're unhappy because I couldn't remember them. Uh, we all meet a lot of people all the time. And, uh, you know, I'd say give your sponsors a break as well. If you've met them before and uh, maybe they can't quite remember who you are or place you because it's been a crazy day. Um, I think that would go a long way. I don't, I won't have a specific uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. a specific resume that was terrible. You know, we've seen our fair share of uh, of resumes that come through that maybe don't get spell checked. Um, we see some from pretty young athletes as well that you know maybe they don't know how to use a spell check. Those actually come off pretty darn cute on our side of things. Yeah, um, totally different, totally different side though when you're getting a sponsorship proposal from a six year old who's trying to go out on the ice oval track and and needs warm clothing. So yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I actually had a, an example of this given to me by Bob Luketic. He uh, owns FCR Suspension, and he does a lot of you know, UTV racer sponsorship and things like that. Well, he uh, was telling us about the best proposal he had ever had, and it was from like a five- or six-year-old. And you know, he like hand-wrote this resume proposal on like the, the paper that has the really big – lines on it you know where you're just learning how to write on oh, and he's he, i guess he saved it for like 10 years and uh you know he's like yeah that was my my favorite proposal it was sincere it was, you know there but there was things spelled wrong or whatever but it was just you know the kid was really sincere he wanted to do better he's like i know i'm not the best 
but I want to do better. He's like, oh, yeah, how, what do you want? T- take it. Just take it, kid. Take my money. Take my product. Uh, just do it. <laughs> this is too cute to not not support. So, but yeah, we kind of lose that uh, as we age. Um, I, uh, I actually, while we were talking about that example, uh, I thought of a message that I received on social media a couple, I don't know, maybe it was a week ago, and I pulled it up here, and I just want to share this example. So if you're listening right now to this podcast and you're thinking of writing a message like this, uh, I'm, I'm here to tell you don't. Uh, I'm just going to read it. I won't share who it is or whatever, but someone sent me a message to the, to the podcast uh, as a direct message. It said, hey, how can I get sponsored? Uh, okay. Uh, that, so my, my next follow-up was like, oh, I've, you know, great. Yeah, you're interested, blah, blah, blah. Have you listened to any episodes? Then the follow-up is, how will you sponsor me with dirt bikes? Do you just talk about me or what? I'm like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> Where are we going with this? I don't know who you are even. And uh, it's it's like, yeah, it's like they're just expecting me somehow to sponsor them. Uh, I don't know. It was really interesting. Uh, I'm sure that, I'm sure, Kirk, you get messages like that all the time. I know I do, and I don't even have... Uh, a, a business I don't think that's capable of sponsoring people uh, so, so it's just well, crazy know, it's, uh, I, I know we'll, we'll get sponsors we'll get people that'll be unhappy because they'll send us uh, 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 basically a message like that via Facebook Messenger hey I want to get hooked up and uh, and then a week goes by and we don't reply and then they're unhappy and I'm like well do you think Facebook is the appropriate place to ask for a right. sponsorship right. I don't, right, I don't right. think so personally you know, I think you want to take the time to find out a little bit more about the company you're interested in whether it's HMK or somebody else, find out who's in charge of that area and then send them something that's, uh, you know, about you. And I've mentioned it a couple of times, but be honest, you know, what is it you're looking for? What is it that you can provide and how do both people, uh, how do both sides benefit in the end? Um, when it, when it goes great, it ends up with a, a fantastic, you know, friendship like I have with Tucker, you know, that'll be, you know, really a lifetime. Whether we're doing mm-hmm. this 10 years from now or not, we'll still be joking about stuff or we'll still have a beer together and, we can look back to the good times, or maybe more importantly, we get more time to go and ride together, which would be great. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in the end, that's really what it's all about. We're all just trying to get back on snow and have some fun. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, well, I I feel like that's a a good spot to transition into the main event where we discuss mindset. And I think the first question I actually want to talk about is around an obstacle. So. Tucker, I'd, what I'd like to know from you is, you know, what's been like the biggest obstacle that you've had to overcome in, in your motorsports career? And, you know, how'd you overcome that? And what's something that the you know, the audience can learn from that? There's always a lot of obstacles, but the number one thing comes about, or it kind of splits into two things. There's injury and there's money. Um, what comes with injuries is you don't get to ride and you can't, you know, unless you've got the photos in your back pocket to be posting to to get the to get your representation out there, then uh, um, you know injuries stop you from doing that. But what also comes along with an injury is money. You know, you have uh, you have copays and and all the things that it takes to get yourself healthy, and that you know that can stop you from riding. That can and, well can stop you from riding. There's nothing to it other than that. Um, Mm -hmm. also just money on a, on a straight up deal is, um, you know, even though you're sponsored and, and, and and you're getting good deals on, on everything, you know, if you're getting half off of everything that you, that you're riding with, you know, that, that can still add up. That can be thousands of dollars a year. You know, you still have to pay full price for a sled or even if you get a discount, that's, that's thousands of dollars if you're getting parts, you know, I'm getting great deals on parts right now and here and and everything, but I'm still going to be trying to figure out how to get $15,000 out of my, out of my pocket or more just to, just to ride this year. And, and you find out pretty, pretty quickly that even if you're uh, um, taking care of your stuff, your brand new sled is only going to last you a couple of years and you get to restart the process right away. Um, and I pseudo took it the hard way as I left a good career. Um, 
a full-time job that only had 10 days of vacation to, to chase snowmobiling and, and, uh, rung up the bills as, as high as I possibly could and got myself in trouble. So I'm, uh, I'm living proof that, you know, even though we look like we're having a great time out there, we're, uh, we're struggling, we're doing everything we can to, to get by and, and to still do what we love. And I'm, I'm recuperating now, but, uh, just, just fair warning for those kids out there that think that we just go out there and ride and, and post pictures all day. That's not what we do. We're, um, you know, the number one obstacle is definitely money and it's always going to be. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. And, uh, I appreciate you sharing that. I've, I don't know. One thing I've always heard from people who don't snowmobile is they're like, well, why do you do that? That doesn't make any sense. Or they'll say like, well, that's pretty expensive when you can only ride it for part of the year or all that stuff. And I, my response is always, it's not rational. What do you think? You think this is a <laughs> rational thing? <laughs> like, do you think that I wanted to have this programmed into my brain that I want to take this super expensive machine that has a million wear components on it and like just beat it up constantly and have to fix it constantly like you think that's something that i wanted to do in my life no i can't help it it's just it's irrational but i love it and i can't i can't stop (laughs) that's the only way i can explain it it's not rational it's just it is what it is yeah my dad uh my dad was a saddle bronc rider and he uh oftentimes he'll he'll ask questions like why the heck do you do this or why the heck do you do that and then sometimes he says well i know why you do it it's programmed into you it's your own it's my fault and <laughs> and uh, i grew up watching my dad have a bad having a bad back and, and barely able to stand up long enough to play catch and then uh i'm doing the same thing to myself so you know it's, it's programmed in for sure we're mm-hmm. wild mm-hmm. my brothers also have something to blame for that when i was uh my brothers are 17 and 18 years older than me and they tell stories about Sticking me out the uh, sunroof of their cougar and going 100 miles an hour down a gravel <laughs> road, holding me by the ankles. So uh, they uh, get a little bit to blame as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I another thing, my wife, my wife will do this all the time. She'll say, "Aren't you like sick of talking about snowmobiles or four wheelers or whatever?" And I'm like, "No. <laughs> what? Yeah. What kind of crazy?" crazy comment was that of course not i actually want to talk about it more would you want to talk about it right now with me and uh <laughs> but yeah um well hey get back into the a, a serious note here uh kirk i what i want to understand from you is a little bit of like what it feels like to make a decision on who to sponsor and and who to not sponsor because it's i think it's very easy to send an email to some company right some you know, the company. And I think it's easy to forget that there is a human being that is, uh, seeing that information, uh, processing it, you know, making decisions. So, I mean, what, what would you say makes choosing the right athlete difficult, uh, in, in why? Well, you know, it's, I think it's even for sure. It is definitely a human decision and, and Tucker hit on it. You know, in the end it's think about it as, you know, every time we sponsor an athlete, as the business owner, it's literally just money out of our pocket. Um, so, you know, whether we give away a, a promo code for 20% off or whether we give away a ball cap, that's 25 bucks. Um, it's always, it always comes down to, as Tucker said, the bottom line. And uh, it's a delicate balance. You know, who do you sponsor? How many people do you sponsor? Uh, did you miss out on the latest and greatest person that you were hoping to get, or you called them a day late? Um, or did somebody else maybe uh, take one of your athletes and woo them over to the other side of the fence? You know, the grass is greener on this side. You should come ride for this brand instead of riding for that brand. Um, in the end, I firmly believe it comes down to the relationships you have. Um, we've had some athletes that have, have uh, jumped off the ship and then come back to the ship. Um, we've had some athletes that have left, and we would love to still work with them, but just it didn't work out because of, as I mentioned earlier, conflicts. So, um, you know, when that, when that athlete comes over, when they talk to us, you know, there's no special potion to know. There's no special way to have a, who do I pick this person over that person? Um, you know, if, if it doesn't matter whether it's a sponsored athlete or, or a regular customer or anybody in life, if, if somebody treats you with respect and comes in with an interesting proposal, we're all more likely to listen to it. Um, and maybe the answer that you get isn't what you wanted. You know, I, I would love, 
um, Chevy or whoever it is to give me a free truck every year. Um, they don't give me anything. It would be nice if they did, though, and I'm sure by me driving it around, I could help them sell more trucks. I'm positive of it, yet they still don't give me a truck or help me <laughs> out in any way, shape, or form. So, you know, if there's anything that they give you um, in any way, shape, or form, or in my case, if I use the Chevy truck example, you know, I had a dealer that said, well, hey, we could help you out, and, you know, so we got a, a few dollars off of it, but in the end, you know, you still have to pay. And you have to earn the respect of the companies that you're working for and those around you. So, um, you know, I, I, I wish that we could come away from this for everybody with, uh, oh, here's how you're going to get sponsored by HMK or by whoever else it is. And I think in the end, you, you, you just learn to treat people the way you were brought up, you know, be respectful and, and uh, send them what you're really after. <laughs> Tell them what you can do and then work your way up that food chain, if you will. You know, maybe the bottom tier of the ladder is, you know, you're, you're going to get a 10% discount. Let's see what you actually do. And the next year, they might be, wow, you really did a lot. Like, I didn't see that coming at all. And um, you end up that you're at shows and you're helping out and you're really getting involved in the industry. And, and it can lead to a job and or a career. And be careful to everybody listening out there. It could lead you into a career like, like what we're talking about. And you're li- mixed up in this crazy mixed up sport. That's so much flipping fun, <laughs> but ultimately yeah. you're, but ultimately you're just a snow farmer and you're waiting for the next good crop. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. I don't think I've heard that example before. <laughs> yeah. That's ultimately, I, uh, you know, we, uh, we started this brand and we joked we're like I came out of the snowboard industry and immediately stayed in the snow industry and uh, I wouldn't change any of it but sometimes you could think well man why didn't we start doing bikinis or something where they take up less <laughs> space there less to make uh, you're not reliant upon the snow to come out of the sky but in the end man it's a ton of fun chasing storms and it's really quite fun to be a a, a snow farmer if you will it's uh, you know mm-hmm. we love powder I love ripping trails with people uh, whatever kind of riding we can do we're into it Kirk also looks a lot better in snow gear than he does in a bikini. Boy, that's <laughs> yeah. the truth. Thanks, Tucker. That's, a very, that's why we have the Bigfoot suit. So that <laughs> You know what? I'm glad you just said the Bigfoot suit thing because that's one thing that I've loved at watching the HMK social media recently is that monster Bigfoot-looking thing. When I first saw it, I was like, what is that? I was like, it's... This dude's beard is weird looking, and <laughs> oh, I see what's going on here. <laughs> Bigfoot's a great mascot for us. People love Bigfoot, and we have a good time yeah. with Bigfoot all over the place. So, it's uh, it's pretty, it's pretty entertaining to have a mascot that's fun. And uh, yeah. I would agree with Tucker. I definitely look better in a helmet and goggles. <laughs> uh, I, I have a great face for podcasts, apparently. <laughs> I, I was gonna say the same thing. I was like, I have. I look great on the podcast. Like that's that's where my face really shines. <laughs> um, yeah, if people don't know what we're talking about with this Bigfoot thing too, check out HMK on Instagram. It's it's pretty cool looking. Like it it looks kind of normal. You're you you have to question for a minute if is that a human or what is it, but uh, it's pretty cool. Um, well, cool. Hey, next thing I actually want to do is is actually dive into the finish line where we're gonna kind of wrap things up. I feel like we got a lot of good info uh, in this in this show already, and uh, you know I, I kind of want to close out with maybe one key takeaway from both of you that that you think the audience should should hear. So I mean, Tucker, what's what's kind of one thing that you feel like people should should take away from this? I uh, no, I've got a thousand things, but I'll cut it cut it. Um, a personal connection and meeting face to face is like a, it's worth ten thousand times more than than uh, anything else you can do. Um, you know, go to events. You know, go to Spring Fling is a deal that uh, Dizzle Brandon Dizzle Cox puts on here in Steamboat. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're up at Steamboat, and you know there's tons of people there. Last year, I went to uh, Togety for the Pink Ribbon Ride. And I met awesome people there. Um, and, you know, I, I then I ended up going to Jackson Hole and, and then Heydays and just go to events. That's the number one thing, just getting to meet people. Um, you know, there's there's just so many people out there that you never, never knew that you were going to meet. They can actually maybe do something for you or you can do something for them. And, uh, you know, it, I love getting to be face to face with people because I get to tell them about what I do and 
And uh, if they don't know me, I I try and make sure that they know what I'm about before I leave, and they get to see uh, how passionate I am about the sport. And that's uh, that's the number one thing I can say to anybody is just go to go to every event you can, and uh, and just meet people because you, you you get new friends and you get you, know, you somehow end up with a new sponsor, and and it's uh, you know it's it's great. And that's what the sport's all about is getting to, getting to be with all the best people in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Kirk, what about you? Is there any, any one thing that we should take away? No, I'd say, uh, I've mentioned a few times that, you know, be honest, be yourself. You know, it shows when you meet other people, you know, this industry is so much fun and, you know, it doesn't matter if it's snowmobiling um, or, or even if it's motocross, or whatever. So there's great people all over the place. And as Tucker said, it's great to get out there and meet everybody. And the more people you meet, just the more it'll snowball to something better. I'd remind you to communicate with your sponsors as well. Um, tell them what you're doing. Uh, you know, sometimes we get caught up with the day-to-day work stuff and we forget to talk to our athletes. And, and I feel bad for that. And the flip side is, is the athletes can also make it a point. Make sure you stay in touch with them. Tell them what you're up to. And, uh, um, that, that little bit of communication goes a long way. And then don't forget to thank all those people that have helped you get to where you are. I mean, maybe it's your mom and dad, maybe it's your grandma and grandpa, maybe it's a best friend, whoever it is, but just remind them, man, a little bit of thanks goes a really long way. And in the end, just get out there and have fun. That's what it's really all mm-hmm. about. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. Well, what's the best way for us to connect with you? We'll start with you, Tucker. Uh, I'm on Instagram and Twitter as Tucker Sled. Uh, T-U-C-K-E-R-S-L-E-D-S and I am on Facebook just as myself Tucker Mertz M-E-R-Z is my last name Um, and send me a message do whatever you whatever you feel like and I've had people send me messages and say would you be willing to go riding with us and you know people that I met at shows and and all that and I I answer quickly I'm uh I like to chat, so send me a message, and maybe we can get together on the hill and and do some riding. Sounds good, Kirk. What about you? Uh, you can find us. I, I guess we'll start some social media since Tucker did as well. But you'll find us at HMK USA on uh, Instagram and Facebook and such. And uh, you can check out our uh, website, of course, HMKUSA.com. And uh, if you're looking for uh, something here, I would say the easiest is just go to our email, just uh, info at hmkusa.com. Uh, you can also call the office. You can find it there on our website and everything. But you know, we'd love to hear from people. If you have an idea, share it with us. If you have a plan on how you're going to be the next big athlete, we can do something together and, and, and grow together. It'd be a lot of fun. Well, that's perfect. Well, I really appreciate both of you taking the time to share your experiences, talk a little bit more about your relationship, you know, give us some advice. Uh, I think it's been phenomenal. So at this point, I am going to leave you with this. Have fun and ride safe. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Sponsored Rider Club Podcast. Make sure you subscribe. I don't want you to miss any of our upcoming guests. We've got a ton lined up. Next up is Walker Fowler. He's your latest GNCC racing champion then we have ron Patton coming on of stud boy traction following that we've got josh martelli of mad media his brother matt martelli was on episode 31 and they both absolutely crush it beyond that we have tiffany stone coming up she is a motorsports host for torque racing pumped to have all those guests make sure you subscribe don't want you to miss any of them beyond that head over to itunes and leave a rating review love to get your feedback and show itunes that we're serious over here with the sponsored rider club podcast special thanks goes out to our sponsors neverlift racing company and specifically armor coat products again head over to armorcoatproducts.com and type in promo code armor 10 for 10 percent off then we got our friends at solder weld we got bold racing and suspension and then top the podium.com make sure that you're following us on social media that way you can get some of the Additional insights into our brand and the racers and the riders and the sponsors and the content creators that we interview. I look forward to serving you again next week. Until then, have fun and ride safe.